the weighted mean is similar to an arithmetic mean, where instead of each of the data points contributing equally to the final average, some data points contribute more than others. The notion of weighted mean plays a role in descriptive statistics and also occurs in a more general form in several other areas of mathematics. If all the weights are equal, then the weighted mean is the same as the arithmetic mean. While weighted means generally behave in a similar fashion to arithmetic means, they do have a few counterintuitive properties, as captured for instance in Simpson's paradox. Examples, basic example, given two school classes, one with 20 students, and one with 30 students, the grades in each class on the test were, morning class equals 62, 67, 71, 74, 76, 77, 78, 79, 79, 80, 80, 81, 81, 82, 83, 84, 86, 89, 93, 98, Afternoon class equals 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 87, 88, 88, 89, 89, 89, 90, 90, 90, 90, 91, 91, 91, 92, 92, 93, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, the straight average for the morning class is 80 and the straight average of the afternoon class is 90. The straight average of 80 and 90 is 85, the mean of the two class means. However, this does not account for the difference in number of students in each class. Hence the value of 85 does not reflect the average student grade. The average student grade can be obtained by averaging all the grades, without regard to classes. Or, this can be accomplished by weighting the class means by the number of students in each class. Thus, the weighted mean makes it possible to find the average student grade in the case where only the class means and the number of students in each class are available. Convex combination example, since only the relative weights are relevant, any weighted mean can be expressed using coefficients that sum to 1. Such a linear combination is called a convex combination. Using the previous example, we would get the following. Mathematical definition, formally, the weighted mean of a non-empty set of data, with non-negative weights, is the quantity, which means, therefore data elements with a high weight contribute more to the weighted mean than do elements with a low weight. The weights cannot be negative. Some may be zero, but not all of them. The formulas are simplified when the weights are normalized such that they sum up to, that is. For such normalized weights the weighted mean is simply. Note that one can always normalize the weights by making the following transformation on the weights. Using the normalized weight yields the same results as when using the original weights. Indeed. The common mean is a special case of the weighted mean where all data have equal weights. When the weights are normalized then, Statistical properties, the weighted sample mean, with normalized weights is itself a random variable. Its expected value and standard deviation are related to the expected values and standard deviations of the observations as follows, if the observations have expected values, then the weighted sample mean has expectation. In particular, if the means are equal, then the expectation of the weighted sample mean will be that value. For uncorrelated observations with variances, the variance of the weighted sample mean is. Consequently, if all the observations have equal variance, the weighted sample mean will have variance. Such that. It attains its minimum value when all weights are equal, and its maximum when all weights except one are zero. In the former case we have, which is related to the central limit theorem. Note that due to the fact that one can always transform non-normalized weights to normalized weights all formula in this section can be adapted to non-normalized weights by replacing all by dealing with variance. For the weighted mean of a list of data for which each element comes from a different probability distribution with known variance, one possible choice for the weights is given by the weighted mean in this case is and the variance of the weighted mean is which reduces to when all the two equations above can be combined to obtain 
The significance of this choice is that this weighted mean is the maximum likelihood estimator of the mean of the probability distributions under the assumption that they are independent and normally distributed with the same mean. Correcting for over or under dispersion, weighted means are typically used to find the weighted mean of experimental data, rather than theoretically generated data. In this case, there will be some error in the variance of each data point. Typically experimental errors may be underestimated due to the experimenter not taking into account all sources of error in calculating the variance of each data point. In this event, the variance in the weighted mean must be corrected to account for the fact that is too large. The correction that must be made is where is divided by the number of degrees of freedom, in this case null AA1. This gives the variance in the weighted mean as when all data variances are equal, they cancel out in the weighted mean variance, which then reduces to the standard error of the mean, in terms of the sample standard deviation. Weighted sample variance, typically when a mean is calculated it is important to know the variance and standard deviation about the mean. When a weighted mean is used, the variance of the weighted sample is different from the variance of the unweighted sample. The biased weighted sample variance is defined similarly to the normal biased sample variance. Where, which is one for normalized weights. For small samples, it is customary to use an unbiased estimator for the population variance. In normal unweighted samples, the n in the denominator is changed to null AA1. While this is simple in unweighted samples, it is not straightforward when the sample is weighted. If each is drawn from a Gaussian distribution with variance, the unbiased estimator of a weighted population variance is given by where. Note, if the weights are not integral frequencies as in this case, then all information is lost about the total sample size n, whence it is not possible to use an unbiased estimator because it is impossible to estimate the Bessel correction factor. The degrees of freedom of the weighted Unbiased sample variants vary accordingly from null AA1 down to 0. The standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance above. If all of the are drawn from the same distribution and the integer weights indicate the number of occurrences of an observation in the sample, then the unbiased estimator of the weighted population variance is given by. If all are unique, then counts the number of unique values, and counts the number of samples. For example, if values are drawn from the same distribution, then we can treat this set as an unweighted sample, or we can treat it as the weighted sample with corresponding weights, and we should get the same results. As a side note, other approaches have been described to compute the weighted sample variance. Weighted sample covariance In a weighted sample, each row vector is assigned a weight. Without loss of generality, assume that the weights are normalized. If they are not, divide the weights by their sum. Then the weighted mean vector is given by. If the weights are not normalized, an equivalent formula to compute the weighted mean is. And an approximation of the unbiased weighted covariance matrix is. If all weights are the same, with, then the weighted mean and covariance reduce to the sample mean and covariance above. There is no unbiased equation to compute the weighted covariance matrix in this case because if, as in the case above, the weights are not integral frequencies, then all information is lost about the total sample size n, whence it is impossible to estimate precisely the Bessel correction factor. Alternatively, if each weight assigns a number of occurrences for one observation value, so and is unnormalized so that with being the sample size, then the biased weighted sample covariance matrix is given by and the correctly unbiased weighted sample covariance matrix is given by applying the Bessel correction. Vector valued estimates, the above generalizes easily to the case of taking the mean of vector valued estimates. For example, estimates of position on a plane may have less certainty in one direction than another. As in the scalar case, the weighted mean of multiple estimates can provide a maximum likelihood estimate. We simply replace the variance by the covariance matrix and the arithmetic inverse by the matrix inverse. The weight matrix then reads. The weighted mean in this case is. Where the order of the matrix vector product is not commutative, in terms of the covariance of the weighted mean. For example, consider the weighted mean of the point, 1 0, 
with high variance in the second component and 0 1 with high variance in the first component. Then, then the weighted mean is, which makes sense, the 1 0 estimate is compliant in the second component and the 0 1 estimate is compliant in the first component, so the weighted mean is nearly 1 1. Accounting for correlations. In the general case, suppose that, is the covariance matrix relating the quantities, is the common mean to be estimated, and is the design matrix, 1. 1. The Gauss-Euro-Markov theorem states that the estimate of the mean having minimum variance is given by and decreasing strength of interactions, consider the time series of an independent variable and a dependent variable, with observations sampled at discrete times. In many common situations, the value of a time depends not only on but also on its past values. Commonly, the strength of this dependence decreases as the separation of observations in time increases. To model this situation, one may replace the independent variable by its sliding mean for a window size. Exponentially decreasing weights, in the scenario described in the previous section, most frequently the decrease in interaction strength obeys a negative exponential law. If the observations are sampled at equidistant times, then exponential decrease is equivalent to decrease by a constant fraction at each time step. Setting we can define normalized weights by Where is the sum of the unnormalized weights? In this case is simply Approaching for large values of the damping constant must correspond to the actual decrease of interaction strength. If this cannot be determined from theoretical considerations, then the following properties of exponentially decreasing weights are useful in making a suitable choice. At step, the weight approximately equals the tail area the value, the head area. The tail area at step is where primarily the closest observations matter and the effect of the remaining observations can be ignored safely then choose such that the tail area is sufficiently small. Weighted averages are functions, the concept of weighted average can be extended to functions. Weighted averages of functions play an important role in the systems of weighted differential and integral calculus. See also Notes Further reading, Bivington, Philippa Data Reduction and Error Analysis for the Physical Sciences. New York, New York McGraw-Hill OCLC A 300,283,069 Struts, T Data Fitting and Uncertainty. Vieg plus Tubner. ISBN A 978 3 9 External links, David Terrace, Weighted Mean, MathWorld. Weighted Mean Calculation.